Okay, this is highly, highly interesting to me. I am going to read this article, and um, it's about an executive order. I'm not going to read the actual executive orders itself, but I'm going to read how this person interpretates it because people need to know the interpretation of this bill or executive order. It says, Biden's executive order canceling the Constitution and it says, on April 15th, President Biden signed an executive order on blocking property with respect to specified harmful foreign activities of the government of the Russian Federation. Contrary to its title, this EO is not about Russia. It is designed to allow the Biden administration to deprive American citizens and organizations of their rights and property by arbitrarily linking those persons to real, imagined, or vaguely defined activities of the Russian government. Now, I know all I have to do to be called a Russian spy is to go on the Young Turks channel and say something that they don't like. It goes on to say, it says, the Biden administration unilaterally makes the determination and requires neither criminal acts nor intent. The punishment is blocking assets and a prohibition on any dealing with the accused person, spouses and adult children of individuals found guilty by accusation under this EO are punished too. The EO was preceded by some distracting maneuvers, both diplomatic, hostile rhetoric towards Russia, and military, sending naval ships towards the Black Sea and recalling them back as if dealing with Russian threats. Thus, many people assume that the EO was directed at Russia and completely missed the fact that it is directed at dissent here at home. Over the past four years, the Democratic Party, fake news, and big tech have been frequently portraying their opponents as Russian trolls or Russian misinformation operator, operators. The Russian collusion narrative, initially invented to overthrow the Trump administration, has been used to smear many conservative movements. Now this effort has been crowned by an executive order. Biden's administration has been recently pushing so many other radical changes, such as packing the Supreme Court, eliminating the filibuster, restricting Second Amendment rights, etc., that the real ramifications of this new EO went completely unnoticed. In my opinion, this EO is the most dangerous of them all. It allows the Biden regime to eliminate its opponent or opposition quickly and quietly. Section 1 of the EO enumerates prohibited activities and defines guilty persons as those determined by the Secretary of Treasury and or Secretary of State in, in consolation with the Attorney General to be. Some of the language in this EO borrows from another EO 13.224, blocking property and prohibiting transactions with persons who commit, threaten to commit or support terrorism. George W. Bush signed EO 13224 on September 23, 2001, in response to 9-11. However, Biden's EO is as similar to Bush's EO as an atomic bomb is to a sniper rifle. Bush's EO targeted financial terrorism. It defined terrorism clearly and narrowly. It minimized legal jeopardy to U.S. persons. It did not strip away the standard for criminal liability requirements of action and intent. It did not target spouses or children of accused individuals. Additionally, Bush made a legally meaningful promise to use it with due regard to culpability, and the Bush administration used it with restraint. Even so, Democrats criticized it harshly, opposed it, and fought it in court. In contrast, Biden's new EO is directed mostly at U.S. persons. It criminalizes speech and political activities based on whimsical and arbitrary definitions. The Biden administration can define malicious activities, domestic processes, or institutions, and the activities that undermine them as it wants. The Biden administration is also free to interpret what constitutes inner interests of the Russian government. Such broad and vague language allows the Biden regime to select U.S. citizens and political organizations arbitrarily and then deprive them of their property and rights without anything reminiscent of due process. The EO does not even require that anybody commit an actual crime somewhere. False cyber attribution or fake bounty claims are sufficient. 
Biden's remarks to the EO showed no regard to the culpability of any targeted U.S. citizens or other persons. Leftist pseudo-elites have been eager to ban speech based on allegations that such speech may be beneficial to Russia. Such ideation has been present among big tech influencers for a long time. This EO effectively gives big tech banks and credit card companies a new pretext to deplatform conservatives and anyone else who opposes the Biden regime by claiming that they are now engaged in illegal activity. Biden's EO appears to allow the Democrat Party to deny Americans the right to advocate against it in future federal elections. This might be accomplished through a, a determination that Russia is interfering in elections against Democratic candidates. Thus, any U.S. citizen who also opposed Democrats could be found to acting for Russia's benefit directly or indirectly. The list of prohibited activities justifying a Biden administration determination to deprive American persons of their property and other rights, referred to here as a deprived person, and it tells you what the order says. For comparison, Bush's EO only covered the leaders of terrorist supporting entities not multiple officials, executives, or directors. Unprecedentedly, Biden's EO targets children and spouses and countless associations. Notice the infinite reach these subsections afford. Those connected to a deprived person can receive the same designation and so on. There is no limit to the number of iterations. Deprived persons essentially become untouchables as dealing with them in any way is expressly prohibited without additional determinations. Giving legal representation, hosting the website, selling food, and giving medical care to a deprived person is automatically prohibited. Section 4 prohibits transactions that cause a violation of this EO, even absent intent or knowledge. This serves as a hint to preemptively cut ties with anyone the Biden regime targets. Section 9 exempts UN bodies and related organizations, NGOs, from any responsibility for interfering in U.S. elections and other activities under this order. The Russian Federation is mixed into the EO only for distraction and as a primer, triggering expanding layers of culpability. I do not expect any putative human rights organization or large media outlets to hold the Biden regime accountable for how it applies this EO or to defend its victims. So far, these outlets have either ignored it or defended it. And I will put a link in the description if you want to read this for yourself. But as always, put your faith and trust in Jesus, repent of your sins, and have a blessed day.